Time to talk winners and losers with our financial expert, Rob Black. Hi, Rob. Hey, Daria. How are you? Good. How are the markets going in? It's a short week, right, because of Easter? Yes. Good Friday. Um, on Friday, so the banks aren't open. Banks aren't open. Stocks typically don't open. Um, Wall Street's taking a bit of a breather today, but it's just a skosh. For the year, we're up 9.7% of the S&P 500. Five straight months of gains. If we can close out March, even though I think we have an eclipse coming, that typically means doom in literature, but probably not doom on Wall Street. Boeing CEOs stepping down after they've had a lot of safety issues with the 737 MAX. And the EU has opened an investigation into Apple, Alphabet, and Meta based on some um, new digital uh, laws tied into um, the European Union. Union. Wait, and you mentioned Boeing, and I was also thinking uh, when it comes to airlines, United is looking at maybe some investigations that might affect it, or is that why the stock's gone down? Yeah, the stock's down 4% on that news today. Um, just uh, kind of a rash of safety issues recently uh, with wheels falling off and uh, parts uh, not being on the plane like they were when they took off <laughs> when they land. Um, so... Probably not going to add up to a lot there. Probably just a little bit more regulation, especially in the main hub, San Francisco, which probably should make me and you breathe a little easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there are a couple of entertainment things that I think are interesting. One is a theme park, which I, I, I don't know if I get the vision of that one. And the other one is this Star Wars extravaganza. I knew you were going to pick Star Wars because James is sitting next to you. Um, He's already checking the times. <laughs> yeah, so uh, May the 3rd and the 4th, which is a play on May the 4th, be with you. Um, AMC and IMAX are going to show all nine movies in a row. That's 20 hours of movies for $84. I'm sure there'll be a James dressed up as Han Solo and maybe you as Princess Leah. I know you're both going to go. Um, <laughs> I did used to not. do, remember the little onion rings we called them, you know, with the braids and the, I did, yeah, back in the day that was that was cool. i called them donuts but yeah. um and then the saudi arabia story is pretty cool um yeah. dragon ball z there's gonna be a theme park it's gonna be 30 locations it's going um multiple locations from the uh, tv show it's an anime from japan and there's gonna be over 30 rides and it's gonna be built in a desert right now that's not populated but uh uh, tourism is on the rise in Saudi Arabia, up 106% since 2019. I've never thought about touring there as a tourist. Yeah. Um, business I get, I've never seen the tourists, but they're building theme parks and, and fun things to do. Wow. All right. Well, you know, if you're tired of Disney, what the heck? Since you mentioned tourism, I don't know if we can flip over to your other uh, tourism, you know, and travel story, which is the cruise ship deal, um, because... I didn't realize that they had a season and it's the end of this month and that's when people start getting going. What's big in the cruise industry right now? Yeah, you'll start seeing cruise boats um, outside the Embarcadero near Kron. Um, cruise season starts on March 29th. It's strong post-COVID. It's a $13.6 billion uh, in revenue last year. Uh, what do we need to know about it? 43% of Americans are going to be on cruises. 43% of cruise people, people on cruises are American, 32% are family, 45% are first timers. I grew up and I loved the love boat in the late 1980s because I was in like 10th grade and there's pretty girls on the show. Uh, Revenge Travel's kind of pushing it. Um, we're going to have 36 million passengers this year. So um, some new locations. This sounds fun to me. South Africa, there's good cruises there where there's volcanoes and rainforest. I didn't know there's volcanoes you can go on a cruise through. That well, sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I, I'm... I'm not a huge cruiser, but I did yeah. went to Alaska. Because again, I think if you look at areas that are a little more difficult to get to by flying and, you know, traveling, cruises are easier. So Alaska was that for me. I, I might try that South Africa one. Or... Yeah, um, Alaska's going to actually, they've got 30,000 grizzly bears. Um, there'll probably be more cruises. Cruise, what do we call people, uh, passengers? Uh, cruise line passengers in Alaska. This cruisers? Year. No, is that no, no cruisers. I think passengers is the best way to go with it. Okay, <laughs> but I, I like the alternative to the Caribbean, to the Bahamas, and the Bermuda. So I'm actually interested, and I've always said cruises aren't for me either. Right, right. Just make sure and wash your hands a lot. You don't want to get sick. Uh, what's going on with home prices? Just before we go, post COVID, not that it's yeah, post COVID because everyone has COVID right now, by the way. But what's going on with the uh, housing market? Um, prices are increasing at pre-COVID level. So 0.6 tenths of a percent month to month, that equals about five to six percent annually. So we finally slowed down in price appreciation. Of course, buyers are disappointed with high mortgage rates. Um, sellers are disappointed with fewer buyers and fewer transactions. So the market's kind of back to where it was. Is it attractive? Is it easy to get into? It's not. Um, but 
appreciation's back to being more normalized at 5 to 6% annually. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Thanks for the advice. Shortened week, but we'll see you uh, tomorrow. All right. Yes, ma'am. And if you have a question for Rob, you can reach him on Facebook, uh, X, or email him directly.